Okay, I was talking to my brother-in-law. He was asking about my van that I'm building. They're interested in seeing what it looks like now, when, before it's finished. So I thought, well, maybe other people would like to see that too. So I've got most everything framed in, so it's a good time. I haven't done drawers and stuff. Yeah, I think it'd be good. This is a 2018 ProMaster 2500. I bought it used. It's a cargo van, and I'm converting it to like a camper van. Sorry about the car noise. There's traffic right there. Uh, one thing I did actually fairly recently is I put the van on jack stand. I leveled the van completely so that it's a lot easier to put in things I can see what is uh, level and true and okay so come on up inside. This is not finished, obviously. I'm gonna have a seat here and I'll show that a little later. Everything's framed in except for three things. The seat, the upper cabinets here, and the wall partition. Let me give you the layout of the van. Obviously, this is the driver's compartment, and then there'll be a partition here. This will be a seat here. I made this ledge specifically to put a laptop on. This also allows for storage. I'll probably put my trash can in there. This is a shower. I actually went for three months in a minivan traveling. It worked, but there's a couple things that I didn't like. One. I couldn't shower in it. So I put a shower in this. Now this is about the smallest shower you'll ever see. It's 20, the pan I bought is 24 by 24 inches. Um, but I fit in it. I can mend my knees and get all the parts. So this is a closet I built so I can have hanging up clothes. Like probably this shirt will go with me. I'll put a bar in here to hang up clothes. Uh, this is, the wire here is going to this dimmer which controls these lights above my bed so I can have reading lights. Obviously this is my bed and it's just it's actually a narrow twin size so it's 30 inches by 75 inches. It fits me. Um, I didn't put as much insulation here and this is bumped out a little further to make room for my head and over on this side for my feet. Obviously the mattress will come up here so you won't see those screws. I'm, I'll have to figure out what to do with trim over there. Up here is a cabinet and this is probably going to be for like jeans and t-shirts. I'm going to put cabinet doors on. Going from the bed forward, this is a pantry, or it will be. <laughs> and I'm going to actually put, uh, put a microwave up here. I, I have enough power, solar and batteries, to run a microwave. And I actually have already tested it out, heated up some water. Uh, so that works. And it'll be up high up here. And I'll have an outlet for it. Down here will be a pantry area. I think I'll make it to where these, there'll be two things that slide out that allow you to have better access to food. It'd be just hard to get to everything in the back. I may have a drawer here. Obviously this is my solar situation and I'll get into that here in a minute. That's, uh, the heater is gonna go there. That's a, it's a diesel heater, one of the Chinese diesel heaters, but it'll be mounted here and then take air from here, go through the heat exchanger and then it'll come out over here under the kitchen cabinets. Speaking of kitchen cabinets, this is a, the only drawer I've built so far and this is made to hold a chest style fridge. So I needed this to fit this exactly so that's why I've already built this. Uh, this the front obviously is not done yet. And then there'll be another drawer here, hopefully. Uh, so, you know, I'll have a kitchen counter, the sink over here. I wanted to have it far enough over here that if I wanted to go down, you know, like maybe I'm brushing my teeth and want to spit out, I'm not hitting my head. Under the kitchen sink, I'll, you know, I'll have drawers. Obviously, I haven't put in the floor yet either. I'm kind of waiting to do that last so that I'm not messing up the floor while I'm working. I have a couple of outlets here. There's the kitchen cabinet. Uh, these wires won't be here. I made places for lights to be mounted here. And then uh, I hope to have an extension to the kitchen counter right here. This controls the lights. I can dim them. The ceiling is, I got this at Home Depot. It's quarter inch cedar. And what I did was I put a coat of linseed oil on it, maybe two coats. I know for the wall I did it, uh, two coats. And that brings out the color, otherwise it looks pretty plain. And then on top of that, I used four 
coats of clear shellac and that gives it sort of a, a satin look but without being glossy. I didn't uh, want the ceiling to look glossy. And then I did the the wall and it's the same it's the same stuff. It's very lightweight. The only thing that's not good about it is that sometimes you get pieces that kind of messed up so there's a little bit of waste and it's sometimes hard to get the tongue and the groove in these. So this will be all covered with a cabinet I haven't built yet so you won't see this unless you open the cabinet and move all the stuff. This is a Max Air fan and I'm sure many many of you are familiar with a Max Air fan. You can turn it on. Well, that's at 100%, you see. Um, but you can turn it in, you know, you can turn it down. So you can, uh, this is a percentage, you can turn it up and down. You can go air out or air in. And there's also a feature where you can do auto where it tries to keep the room temperature. You can run this in the rain as well. Okay, so next, right, the garage area, which is not as big because I have a single bed. But here it is, so obviously this is the bed. And then underneath we got, uh, this is a 33 gallon water tank. I haven't done the plumbing yet, but there will be a pump and uh, in the compartment between the water tank and the shower will be a, a water heater. Everyone tends to say hot water heater and I always want to say it too, but that's a little redundant because <laughs> but anyway it's a water heater it's only um, I think a two and a half gallon so it's gonna be a quick shower I tell you it's like a one minute shower it's turn it on get wet turn it off lather up uh, turn it on to just rinse off and then turn it off again so that's that's great it'll work the electrical if I had to do it over again I'd probably do some things different but this is fine for now. One thing that's different about my build than a lot of them is I'm going to have two inverters. This is a big inverter. It's 2,000 watts. This will run the microwave and the toaster, basically the kitchen plus the water heater. Um, but the problem with large inverters is that when you have them on, they, even if you have no loads on them, um, there's some overhead where they take some wattage. Obviously, you have limited wattage. I want to have my laptop with me and run that like pretty much all the time. Be able to run it like 16 hours a day if I want. Uh, but I didn't want to run this because this would just eat all that power. And the laptop takes, I think, 17 watts total. So it's not much. So what I decided to do, I got a 150 amp. Nope. I got a 150 watt pure sine wave inverter that just, when there's no load, it's just barely any power. It just sips power. So that's great. And what I'm doing right here is these wires are gonna, these are the 12 volt that's gonna go to um, basically where that laptop ledge was. And I'll run the inverter up there. And uh, that way I'm only running 12 volts through the frame of the, the van. There's three ways to charge the batteries. One is a solar. I have 500 watts of solar going through a 40 watt EP ever MPPT charge controller. So that's the first way. Uh, secondly, I have a battery to battery charger mounted under the bed here. That allows me to charge the battery from the alternator as I'm driving down the road. And I have an on-off switch up front that I can control that with. So here's a switch I put in that controls the battery to battery charger. Yay! The third way, which I don't expect that I'll be using that much, but this is an actual battery charger from PowerMax. And so it allows me to plug into household power or a generator and charge up the batteries that way. So, I have three different ways to charge a battery. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool, huh? I know, that's pretty cool. If I think about it, I'll put some of these links in the description. I bought most of this stuff off of Amazon. I 
put the seat in just temporarily. I've already made the, the seat. Um, it's just sitting on a couple buckets for right now. <laughs> the idea is that uh, it can seat two people if need be, but most of the time, it's just gonna be me. And uh, I got this Lagoon mount, which is nice. Here's the A keyboard to show you. I'll probably have a wireless one, but I can be like this and have this, the keyboard, I can have the keyboard far enough back that I can rest my arms on the ledge here and uh, have my mouse here. I can open the door and have a nice view of the outside. Have my morning coffee. I don't drink coffee, but you know, I'll be able to, oh, and this is also where I will eat all my meals. All the plywood I used in this is formaldehyde free because I don't want to be breathing that stuff. It's more expensive, but it's good stuff. Uh, the one advantage of not putting in your floor at the start is that you can write all over the subfloor and it doesn't matter. One uh, tip is that I made a center line down the center of the van. This is really helpful because it's hard to know, it's hard to get things straight, but now I have something I can measure against. So it's just a, a helpful little tip there. I learned a lot, a lot as I was building it and it was enjoyable. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and it uh, maybe give, gave you some ideas for making your own van. I can't wait to finish it and see what it's like finished. I already like it even though it's not done. Maybe you'll see another one of these videos with me with this finished and that'll be great <laughs> because that'll mean I actually got done. Make sure you hit that like button if you like the video, it helps the YouTube. Eh? <laughs> it helps the YouTube algorithm so that other people can enjoy it too. Boom, boom. If you think this video sucks, don't hit the like button. Seriously, don't do it, because then other people will see it, and it could be bad. <laughs>